Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit? This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. So, sister, I'm going to talk about something today that matters a lot, so much so that I've recorded two other podcasts on this very topic. However, this was reminded to me again when I was just at a seminar in Dallas um, as away from my family for the last five days, at least to our kids, because I was there with my husband. It was awesome, called Funnel Hacking Live. A man by the name of Russell Brunson, who was created a product which is called Click Funnels, which I use in my business and a lot of entrepreneurs do. And he's just absolutely brilliant. Everything about him is amazing. Uh, I could go on and on about Russell Brunson, just an amazing human being and more of who he is than even more of the, the stuff and the cool shit that he creates and continues to create and innovate. Um, but beyond that, what I really realized was that at this seminar, which is called Funnel Hacking Life, 1,500 people. My husband's part of um, Russell's, what's called the Inner Circle. And um, the quality of people that were at this event, sister, were just phenomenal. And I don't mean it was just like, like we knew we knew a few people, a handful that were there and got to just talking with other people and hearing others speak that are part of Russell's group. And like just, um, again, the, the people that were there were just amazing. Now, just as a point of reference, as context, I had this conversation with someone that was within the inner circle, and I said, you know, I'm just like, man, the people that are here are just, like, fucking amazing. They're real, they're genuine, they're sincere, like, they're badasses, but, like, they're not posers or pretenders or liars or people who posture. A lot of the shit you actually see in online business, like, a lot of it. And what I told, which was a funny story with to this person, I was like, I said, you know, when my husband and I were in practice, and we'd be going to all sorts of different seminars, chiropractic seminars, and most of the ones that we went to weren't about the science of chiropractic, but it was more of the management of, right, the business of chiropractic. A lot of stuff that's really not taught in schools as health professionals, or just it's taught really, really poorly. And, you know, just would really learn from each other. And what would happen within within chiropractic, it still does, is there would be a lot of, a lot of, again, the posers and the liars. People, people would kind of inflate the types of numbers of people that they were seeing in their practice and the income that they were making in their practice. And, um, you know, a lot of them, which kind of later we would find out through, you know, divorces and bankruptcies. It's just like, holy fuck, dude, you are a big fucking liar. Like, you are not who you appeared to be, who you led yourself to believe that you were from how you acted. We're like, oh my God, chiropractors, there's just so many are just such fucking liars. And, and then we're like, hey, I guess it happens in every single business because here we are now in the online world and it's there again, right? But the people that were there at Funnel Hacking Live was just, again, amazing. And I was reminded of, again, as I'm hearing from clients at times and just like, hey, like, you know, like, what do I do when I've got, and these are clients, a lot of them do that I've worked with for a long period of time where they have, have a lot of the tools and the strategies are really clear on what they want. They know how to really process thoughts that come in and really question, inquire about them. Um, but will often get thrown from this, from people that don't support them, people that don't inspire them, people that they just, they just don't, don't like what they're doing. So, you know, you have someone who's expanding into a brand new, brand new human based clearly on what they want. They they know why it matters to them. They've been committed to really doing the work that's required. And what happens is when you really stand in that truth, you stand in who you are, sister, there are people that will like, they'll watch you. They'll just be like, Oh my God, like they'll be so fucking inspired by you. So a lot of you listen to the podcast have reached out to me and I, I appreciate that. I really, really do. You know, to me, the, the way my way of being is everything. Like what I talk about, I do. What I, you know, tell them my stories, like this is my real life that I'm sharing with you to really help you to possibly see something that you couldn't see before, to really share the lessons that I've learned. I mean, really, my biggest intention is for you to not have to take so long to learn what I've learned, to let me help you get there faster. And, but there are definitely people though who I piss off 
They don't like that I swear. They think I'm arrogant. They think I talk too much. They think, you know, whatever they think. It doesn't, it's irrelevant what the, the comments that I've had and the emails and the nasty haters and stuff. That's not really the point. The point is, is just knowing that when you stand up and who you are, you will create that polarity. People will love you. People will hate you. There'll be a few of the indifferent kind of people, but for the most, you're going to, you're going to hear from those people at either ends. And the challenge that I keep seeing with some of my clients is they'll say like, well, these people don't support me. Blah, blah, blah. Like, what do I say to them? How do I convince them? And it's like, wait a second, let's start back at the beginning, sister. Like, who the fuck are you playing with here? Like, who is in your circle of influence? Because it clearly seems to be a theme that's happening again and again. And people that just, they're not supportive. Right. And so you could have all the techniques and tools and strategies, things that you do that really help you stay in a place of power, help you have the comments that come your way and you just kind of like wax on, wax off like the karate kid. Right. Or like Wonder Woman with her, her bracelets that like repelled bullets, you know. But the thing is, it's like, it's kind of like, why are you putting yourself in those situations in the first place? See, for me, I used to, when I would get the hater comments online or stuff, I often would engage and I would retaliate. Like, I'm like, I'm going to fucking take you down. Like, fuck you. You have no idea what it takes to do what I'm doing. You have no idea how much courage it fucking takes, how much work, how the consistency of doing something, like even just simple like this podcast, is a lot of fucking work. This is episode 254, I think I'm putting out. Like, that is boatloads of content and work and the work to create all this and publish it and show notes and all that kind of stuff. And so often I would. And, you know, it's like, I don't regret that stuff at all. Like, I don't. There's times for me too where it's just like, I got to like draw a line in the sand. I'm going to use this person as an example to also let others know that it is not okay for you to treat me that way. You can talk smack, but you know, but here's, here's what I've come, come, I would have found to be true. And what's been really true for me, sister, is I do less of that now. I almost do none of it actually. I'll be at times like, I'm going to write something. I'm like, wait a second, let me take a step back, breathe. What do I want? Yeah, I don't really want to have to deal with this person. Okay. So if I comment, most likely they're going to comment back. They're going to comment back. I'm dealing with someone who's insane. And so there's not going to be any, like the outcome is not going to be good. All right. It's not going to make me feel any better. I'm just going to get more fired up. It's going to remove me more from, from what I want. It's going to take my focus off. Like I don't want that. So I've learned how to use the delete and the block button really fucking well on Facebook and on email. I just do. Because I clearly know what I want. And who I want to be around are not people like that. They do not support me, inspire me, lift me up. Like, I'm totally okay if someone questions me, challenges me. So you might be one of these sisters who are just like, oh my God, she doesn't want anyone to ever like challenge her. Not at all. I got coaches that do that. I have friends that do that for me. I have friends that do that with an intention that's of a good intention, not like I'm going to take you down, right? Not like I'm just going to keep like, like poking at you and giving you what they see as, quote, feedback when you haven't even asked for that, or advice when it's like, I don't remember asking for that. They have their own stories. There's something about my message. There's something about maybe your message with others and too that triggers people, right? But the biggest piece of this though too is just like, again, you're doing the shit that most people are willing to do, and yet they want these results that you have, but they won't do the fucking work. And you, my sister, listen to this podcast, women wanting more, are somehow attracted to this message because you want more within your life. So guess what? You want what most people don't have. You need to be willing to do that. Most people won't eat. Let me re- rephrase it. I got riled up here right now. Woo! Okay. <laughs> In order for you to get the things that most people do not have, an amazing marriage, an incredible business with fulfillment and dollars flowing into your bank account, a, you know, a strong, lean, healthy body with energy for days, connection with your children, I talk about passion, marriage, connection, great sex, like purpose in your life, like really having all what I call now the more four pillars in place. You have to be willing to the work to do the work that most people will not. You want a different result? You must be willing to do what most people will not do. That's it, right? So when you people see you doing that, sister, like it kind of pisses them off. For some, for some. So who you hang out with matters online, offline, face-to-face, people you hang out with in your business, maybe if you work for someone else with work, like friends, all of it, it matters, sister, and it matters way fucking more than you think. 
Because here's what I want you to realize is imagine the possibility of only being around people that support, love, inspire you, challenge you to be better. Imagine that life. See, that's the life that I live. That's the life that I choose. And it can take time, right? People often say, well, how about family? Well, family has to be this little trick here, right? Because there are some, there are some friendships and things that have happened online I literally just like walk from because that person is just, they're, they're not, they're not on my team. They're not on my team. They're not there again to love, inspire, support me, challenge me in a good way, like at all. They're just, they're just assholes, assholes, bitches, whatever. So I, I very, very comfortably walk from those people. Like, it's like, let me just like wash my hands. Like I'm done moving on fucking next. But when it's family, that can be something different for me. It's creating boundaries for me. It's, I don't really hang out with family that much. We've got a few select family members that I really, I mean, I love all my family, but there are a few select that I actually enjoy spending time with. And the ones that I don't, I put in the appearances when I, I feel like, like I choose to not need to, but I choose to, and I lower my expectations for what that interaction is going to be like. Then I go their family and that's it. Don't run stories. Don't have any drama about it. So here's your more tip for you today, sister. I really wanted you to take a look who are like the top like 5, 10, 20 people that you interact with in your life and ask yourself this question. So make a list of who they are. Make yourself with this question. Does this person love, inspire, support me, challenge me in the way, like understand, get me, right? You feel understood. You feel like you can be yourself, that person. You feel like you can open up and be vulnerable and they will be there and it will be safe for you to actually show that piece of you. Now there's going to be some lists you're like, Hell yes. And some are like, hell no. And some are like, hmm. um, And I can tell you right now, that's probably a no. That's probably a no. So then your next piece of this, you've gone through your list of 5, 10, 20 people that you hang out with on a regular basis, friends, family, coworkers, neighbor, whoever that is. Do they support, love, inspire, support you, challenge you in a good way, like on your team? It's a yes or a no. And the third question is the ones that are a no, what are you going to choose to do with that? Like it's your choice, right? And what I found to be true is, you know, some friendships where it's like, friendships don't necessarily have like, oh my God, but they've always been my friend. Okay, but if you've changed and they've changed and they're not okay with how you've changed, or I should say, you know, what's actually more common is that person is exactly the same. There's no growth or expansion in their life. They're just like who they were in high school and you have changed. I still remember a friend of mine back from high school. This was maybe like 10 years ago. My husband and I were traveling to my former hometown. And my husband was doing a marathon at the time. We were staying in a hotel, which was not like a super swanky old hotel. It was a nicer hotel where we used to live. And they're like, oh, look at you. When she found out where we're staying. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Look at me. <laughs> like there was, there was an indefinite tone with that. I'm just like, dude, this does not work for me, this friendship anymore. Like, no. Nope, nope, nope. And I didn't feel any kind of qualms about, well, I went to high school with her and I should always have this relationship and I've known for this many years. It doesn't matter because it's not what I want. I don't want to walk away from people that I hang out with and feel drained. You know those energy suckers? I don't want that. I want to walk away from interactions and feel energized, feel love, feel like the time you spent with someone was almost like time was standing still. Like you were so present because you really got something out of that interaction, that connection that you have with that other human being. So what are you going to choose to do with those? Because I can tell you right now, the, the new community that I've created called the Women Wanting More Sisterhood, what I'm calling simply the sisterhood, is a group of strong, supportive, inspiring women that will love and connect with you and challenge you in a good way. And once you get to know them, we'll absolutely get you that are committed to creating power in all areas of life, in their marriage, in their business, with their body, and with their family. So if that is something that you would like to really take a look at, sister, like, and again, I have some too, where it's just like, oh my God, I'm in this job that like blows, or God, there's no other women that are really like, like me. I'm telling you right now, there are women like you from all around the world right now in the sisterhood, which just the time to record this podcast, it's only been out for like 10 days. There's already 37 women that are in there from UK, Australia, Canada, United States. 
Like the engagement, the interaction, the support. Like I'm just getting started. I am just getting started with this amazing group, which I call the sisterhood. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to head over to drkarenosborn.com slash sisterhood. You're going to watch a video about that. You have a chance to enter in your email to actually be able to learn more about it and have a chance to really join. Now, right now as we record this podcast, which is coming out, let me see, the very next day, probably after it or maybe late tonight, after I come back from the hockey game with my little boy, since this podcast is going a little later than usual in the week. Um, there's right now like about, I think there's 10, 11, 13 spots that are left at a special tuition, which is like $1.50 a day, sister. So this is a monthly sisterhood program and you'll see all the amazing things that happen within the group and all the value you're going to get from it. But a buck fifty a day, that's like less than half of a Starbucks latte for you to be part of a group of women that get you, that inspire, support and uplift you to create more in all areas of your life. So that's over at drkarenosborn.com slash sisterhood. So I will talk to the next episode, sister. A life of more is just one step away from me doing the fucking work every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the how to get more tip, subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosborn.com slash newsletter. 